Hey everybody, <laughs> welcome to another live episode of The Grid. My name is Scott Kelby, we're glad you're here. I've got two very, very cool guests today. To my left, commercial photographer and love machine, Eric Egley. Eric, good, good to have you on the show for the first time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank All right, you. And, and to my right, uh, Brandon Hess, also a love machine, not a commercial photographer, more of a lighting guy. Lighting guy. Lighting good, guy. Good way to They're say lighting it. guys. All right, so we got some lighting guys today. We're going to talk about our topic today is the top seven most common lighting mistakes. So we went to lunch today and we were, we were having a field day with this. I'm like, save it for the grid because we were going crazy with all this, just the different fun stuff. Uh, so hopefully some of these things will help you today. And if not, it'll just give us a chance to poke fun at uh, Eric and, and Brandon. Um, no, no, because what's, what's cool is that we all have different opinions on stuff. Absolutely. Especially Brandon. Absolutely. No, I have a lot have, of opinions. No, we all have different opinions on all kinds of different stuff. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We're looking forward to it. Just a couple of things to get us started. First, we have to say hello to some people, like Victoria Pavlov, who said, ready? Hello. <laughs> That's all you got, Victoria? Hello? See, look, now Carl says, hello, everyone, and good afternoon or good evening. We have Johan. Hello from a hot the Netherlands. Johan, we've got to work on your English. Loopy Bridget. <laughs> says hello all my lovely gridsters and the raging badger says hello to everyone from slovakia hey glad to have you guys all here we have jen on the comments as always how are you doing today jen i'm good how are you jen's very very good she says all right hey um a couple of things so i want to lead you over to lightroomkillertips.com it's a blog that i write like all the time just for no particular reason. Uh, i did a thing on monday about the lightroom web gallery do you know about the web gallery not sharing a collection the Lightroom Web Gallery. I haven't heard of it. This is no, actu it's no. actually really good. So what it is, is when you go to share a collection, it'll say share your collection. So you could always share, well not always, but for the last maybe year, you've been able to share any Lightroom collection. But the gallery is for storytelling. You get to pick a big cover picture, and you can put in text, and you can add captions, and you can put breaks, and it's like for storytelling. Hmm. But it's part of Lightroom. It's built right in. I wrote the whole thing on Monday, so. Go back to Monday at lightroomkillertips.com and check it out. Also, ready for this? This is big. Lightroom created their own Instagram channel. About time. Anyway. What year is it? <laughs> anyway, so they need people because they, now it's growing really fast. Yesterday they had 1,000 people. Today they have 10,000 followers, so they're growing like crazy. So it is Instagram.com slash Lightroom. Go check out the Lightroom channel. They have some very nice photographs from Julianne Cost and she's Adobe Evangelist, and she speaks at Photoshop World. She does the keynote, she's a very good photographer. Uh, fine art, she does like kind of fine art and some travel stuff. Nice. She did some yeah, really favorite. nice stuff from Japan and stuff. So anyway, go check it out. That's over at uh, their Instagram account. Uh, what else? I don't know, but I know that Wayne says hi from Melbourne, Australia. Marta Rodriguez says hello from beautiful Brandon, Florida. <laughs> hello, beautiful Mark. Uh, Andrew George says good day from Nova Scotia. Everybody's here from all over. Mohammed's here from Dubai. David's here from Scotland. Uh, let's see who else is here. Chris is here from Denmark. Love the program. Thank you, Chris. Glad to have you here. Stephen Barnes from Belfast, Northern Ireland. You know, Stephen, you live in the coolest place. Ireland. You ever been to Ireland? No, I definitely want to go, though. Nicest Planning people. Planning that with you my ever wife. Been to yes. Ireland? You've been to Ireland? Nope. You've been everywhere. That's one place I haven't been. Uh, we need to do the grid from Ireland, right? We're right, in. Let's go. We we'll are in. Let's we'll go. We'll see you in about we'll, 14, 14 hours. hours. <laughs> I'm telling you what, uh, the, Ir the Irish people are just some of the most nicest, warmest. Met a lot of Irish people. And beautiful country, just really. And Fernando's here. We like to call him just Nando. Nando. And Terry White says, hey, what's up? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Uh, Larry Becker. Hey, Larry, we're just going to talk about you in a minute. Larry Becker says hello from France. No London, no Vegas. Nah, he's in Polk County, Florida. Way to go. Fernando says hello from Luz lovely Lisbon, Portugal. Terry. Terry, what's up? Terry, where you been? Terry, what y'all trying to do? <laughs> anyway, glad to have you guys here. Uh, we're getting ready to go because we got a great topic today. Uh, my guest blogger today is Corey Barker. Go read Corey's uh, guest post today over at scottkelby.com. Corey's got a very, he kind of gives you a, an update of what he's been doing. Of course, he was at Photoshop World here with us just a few weeks ago and stuff. He's still right. He's got the feature story in Photoshop User Magazine this month. And this was a shot that he took on the floor of Photoshop World, right? And then scroll a little further and you will see he put together this. Yeah, there he goes. He, he made it a thing. He always takes it another notch, Mr. Bond. 
Anyway, go check out all Corey's stuff. All right, you guys know we're giving away some, we're giving away better stuff than usual today. Now, of course, we have a Platypod Pro. Wait a minute, I'm sure it's the right one. This is the Max. Giving away a Max today, very important, right? Do you know what their Kickstarter's at? Now, they were trying to raise $20,000 when we launched it here in the grid. Just 20,000 bucks is all they wanted. They are at 181,726, and it ends this weekend. So if you want to get in on the initial order and all the cool deals they've got, go to platypod.com, P-L-A-T-Y-P-O-D, click the Kickstarter link, get all kinds of deals, and that. Say, so we're giving away one of these. You know, we love them, can't live without them. <laughs> People are buying them before they even are born. We're giving one away. Two gift cards, not just one, but two. From Lens Pro to go, rent some stuff to put on your platypod, right? But because our friends from Westcott are here today, they are giving away an Apollo Orb to somebody, right? Absolutely. Yes, so an Apollo Orb, that's like your most popular It is probably the modifier. most popular Apollo modifier. The Rapid right. Box is pretty popular. I love the Rapid. I think you I'm, have I'm one. the king so of the you, rest you, in your you heart. I freaking love box. Rapid Boxes uh, on a level you can't believe. So I, that's pretty much all I use anymore yeah. is if for a hot shoe flash, there is no better softbox than the Rapid Boxes. Absolutely love them. They're the best. And you guys that have seen my Just One Flash class, it's all using like those, the, all of it. I think I do use the, the Apollo uh, Mega JS, the really, the really, by really, really big mm -hmm. one. But anyway. The Orb is close. I mean, it's a 43-inch Octa. It opens and closes like an umbrella. Wrong, awesome prize. We're excited fight. to give it yeah. away today. Yeah, so somebody today that's watching the show is going to win the Apollo Orb. We're also giving a copy of Moose Peterson's brand new book on aviation photography. Not out yet, but you'll get one of the first ones that do. So we got a lot of good stuff to give away today. Uh, also, we're talking about lighting. That's our thing today. Hey, can we go to my screen real quick? Because I want to show you, because Eric is a commercial photographer, and he's got some really cool stuff. So you did this. Tell me about the series that you did here. Uh, this series was actually done for a healthcare company. Okay, and, and the neat thing about this, this particular, these two shots, both professional models. Never met each really? other at all. They so ever. look like husband and wife because they're so miserable. As look soon at as that. they, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so as soon as they walked in the door, they had they just hit it off, which was great. It made my job a lot easier. Um, but uh, you know, I wanted to get those shots uh, where, you know, miserable type feeling, and then you know, after 50 years, they're they're happy. If you can stay together 50 years, you're do, do, be happy. do you do your own post or do you send I it out? I do my own post. Your post. I good. Do my own post. Thank you. Your post is solid. <laughs> Thank you. And most of it's storytelling type imagery. I mean, that's what I enjoy doing. Uh, I love doing that that type of thing where you're telling a story either within one image or within several uh, images. These are all models. Uh, actually, no. Uh, this the little girl is a model, and then uh, Nick, my buddy Nick, is actually another photographer. And the gentleman on the left is a CEO that I've shot many, many times, and he just sort of fit the fit the bill and boy that's just interesting yeah that's some cool stuff yeah i have a lot of fun still love every minute of shooting i uh, like that bike on the wall <laughs> yeah we as uh we like our collectibles. Every woman seems to love that shot. They like that I, shot? I, I that is the creepiest think, dang shot I've ever think, seen. <laughs> Are you kidding me, Eric? I, I, Look at that. She's the, in like a sanatorium the working or something. Title was, or a... The working title was Not Without My Gucci. Oh, I see. Like, she doesn't want to be taken to the loony bin without, without an expensive her Gucci, bag. You got it. I don't know, man. You got it. I don't, I, that's freaking me out. <laughs> That's a little bit much leg for the show here. Uh, What's a going lot more on? Leg. What is going on? I'm not going to no, click again. I, wouldn't even, I don't know if you want to click again. No, okay. go ahead and click again. Right. <laughs> go ahead and click again. Okay, I, I told you not to click. But geez, he did. No, you said click yeah, again. Well, I, don't know. I get confused sometimes. All right. Okay. We need to take a break after that, <laughs> Eric. I'm very uncomfortable now seeing these. This is, you should be here when we, so Jen, Jen is a boudoir photographer. Oh, there you when go. we show Jen stuff, we can, I'm go. not kidding, we go three clicks into it, we all freeze. Yeah, right. We just go. <laughs> I'm, so I'm this not, is tame. This is this, tame, right? This is so tame I mean, compared you know, to Jen stuff. Come on. Jen stuff is like, it's like, they don't even have a rating for Jen stuff. It's oh, got a right. different, it's like, <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> yeah, I don't believe No, that. it's not her stuff, but it's, it's like. It's safe for work we, if you work at Hooters. We it's call not, that artistic. It's not safe for work anyplace else. <laughs> we call that artistic. 
Uh, All right. <laughs> oh, hey, so Stephen from from uh, from Ireland says, come over anytime. See how friendly people are? I uh, like it. All right. And it's boy, everyone, we, we got the international audience today. Johnny's here from Uruguay. Uh, Matt, the <laughs> Wombat Charniski is checking in from Austin, Austin. Texas. And D-Rock says, uh, D-Rock says, I'm catching the grid live for the first time. Shot my first wedding Saturday, and it's because of all the courses on Kelby awesome. 1. Oh, uh, yeah, D-Rock. Thank you. That is wonderful. We always read comments like that. Uh, ooh, Rabino Wen is here from <laughs> Michigan. Go blue. Uh, hi, Rabino. <laughs> oh, H. <laughs> Are, That's are, why they have to keep us divided. Yeah, you yes, do. A little rivalry here. Roll Tide is all I can say. Uh, Sorry, guys. Oh, oh, oh. Everybody, step uh, back. We're just going to stop all right. right there. Kathy Bates and hi, Kathy. Good to, good to have you here. All right. And look at this. So Stephanie Richer, queen of the rabid badger, says, I used the Platypod Pro that I won from the grid last Friday at a wedding for the ring shots. Now she says, what's an Apollo orb? Tell us what's an Apollo. You know this the stuff. The Apollo Orb is an umbrella mount softbox. So I'll go find a picture. Yeah, of it. you can Hold on. go to our website. I'll go find it. FJWestCon.com. I know what the um, is. <laughs> really? Have you shopped there before? <laughs> um, Dude, I've shopped there on a level that is. But it's an umbrella modifier that opens and closes like a like a rain umbrella would, and um, it's it's a 43 inch octa shop. though. I'm so to shop. there's a shot of it. It's. Uh, Wait a minute. We're going to Apollo and Halo. It's like it's already oh, already, it's already up there. there? On the no. Is it right here? No, that's a halo. She's got it. Yeah, oh my gosh! There you hey, there go. It there it is. Very speedy. Forty-three inches. Our most popular version. Uh, most most likely because it's an octa shape. You know, Scott and I always talk about why people prefer octa shapes. Yeah. Only photographers prefer octa shapes. Yeah, we're gonna talk mm. about that in a minute. <laughs> a don't, bit, yeah. don't 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 get ahead of ourselves. Live. I won't spoil it. All but right. That's an Apollo orb. So you're, somebody's Stephanie. gonna win that today. It's for hot shoe flash. So if you're a hot shoe flash user, and strobe shooters, and there's if, a strobe version. Well, no, it's the same deal. If mm -hmm. as long as your strobe isn't, you know, two feet long. Which Ooh. why are you shooting with a strobe that big? Anyways? Why are you shooting with a strobe two feet long? It, it, it's built on an umbrella shaft, so it mounts through the umbrella receptacle. Mm -hmm. There you go. There I didn't you even go. Know it was called a receptacle. That's like a medical term for part of your lighting. That, that hey, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, our topic today is seven common mistakes that people make with lighting. Of course, we're taking all your questions and comments, unless you're Rose Kieran from New Zealand, <laughs> who came late today, Rose. <laughs> Rose, I know it's six in the morning in New Zealand, but you need, to, you need to set your alarm, Rose. You need to get up early. This is serious, serious business. Now, see, Ed G from the Netherlands is up. He says, good evening. Are you guys on the same planet? <laughs> We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're taking your questions. Don't go away. Ah, grid cap. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Rob Foldy, and welcome to my class, How to Make the Peewees Look Like the Pros. So we're going to go over how to get the most from your camera settings, how to clean up your background, shoot from different perspectives, how different lenses are going to help out uh, the look of a photo, how shooting with a long telephoto versus a wide lens is going to affect the photo. We even do some shooting uh, with an iPhone in this class. So this class is definitely geared towards everybody. Whether you're a sports photographer or not, these are some great quick tips that are going to take any of your photos right to the next level. Follow along, it's available exclusively on kelby1.com. Hi, I'm Calibra Kelby. Is it possible to capture beautiful and captivating images with just your iPhone? Images that look like they were taken with a high-end pro camera? As an artist and iPhone photographer, I absolutely believe you can. And not only that, I want to show you how. Come with me on this journey to learn how to really unlock the power of your iPhone's camera. How to compose and create gorgeous photographs. Plus, you'll learn my favorite post-processing techniques with some apps you're going to fall in love with. Join me and Larry Becker for my new class, You Shot That With Your iPhone, exclusively on KelbyOne.com. Hi, everybody. Scott Kelby here. So I did this online class called Just One Flash, and it was based on I was running into so many photographers who said, yeah, I bought a flash and just not getting the results I wanted to. I'm kind of disappointed with it and I'm not sure I'm going to use it. And I'm like, that's heartbreaking because just one flash could be amazing. And so I did this class and I started from scratch. We started on the set, we went through the gear, we went on location, we were here in the studio, did the whole thing. And it was my most popular class of the entire year. And those people said, wow, I learned a ton. I'm finally falling in love with my flash. Maybe you could do a class where you add just one more flash. 
so I did. It's called Just One More Flash. So this is now how to add that second flash to add more depth and dimension. We talk about lighting backgrounds, we talk about kicker lights, hair lights, all the things you can do with that second flash. And it's found only here exclusively at Kelby One. Hey, we're back. I cannot believe everybody is freaking watching this show today. Like everybody, all the gang is here. All right, Donald Page says, easy with the roll tide. Go Vols, go Vols. Love the Vols, you know I love the Vols. I love, love, love. You know what, I love Donald Page. You guys don't know Donald Page, do no, you? No, He is one of the greatest guys on the planet, period. You will, everybody you meet, if you mention, you ever have someone that, where you mention their name, everybody goes, do you love that guy? That's Donald Page. Larry Becker. Lights out photographer. Larry Becker's another <laughs> Larry guy. Becker. Who Larry. doesn't love Larry Becker? Now, Larry Becker says my vote for best Westcott product is any flex. You know why? That's why a, we love Larry he's Becker. Video. Larry's Indeed. very video. Yeah. He's, all, he's still, but he's video too. He's a still mm -hmm. video guy. Oh, man, everybody's here today. Mark Wegner is watching. Mark Wegner's in the house. So he's so the guy. The you saw Mark. Yes, so I took great work. Oh, my God, today. fantastic we work, We were looking Mark. at your work on the walls today. Fantastic. Though. Excellent, excellent stuff. All right, and the new winner, the, the new winner, Melanie Kerr Favilla, Kern Favilla. She is the winner. That's going to awesome. be, I was telling oh, you about her. flowers, Her flowers, right? her flowers that's her. Yeah. She says, I watched Calibra's iPhone class, and I can't believe I learned new things about a phone that I've owned for years. Great class. Thank you, Melanie. Um, Wayne Young says, all the teachers at Kelby One are amazing and inspiring. Thank you. LaVon Hall. Yo, LaVon. Hi to all my buddies. Dave Clayton. You guys know Dave. you got to know Dave Clayton. Dave Clayton says, good evening, y'all. I know Hello, him Dave. from the grid. <laughs> <laughs> He's grid oh. famous. <laughs> Lori says, oh, hello, it's Wednesday already? It's hard to believe this. Uh, Sandra says, just discovered all the awesome classes on Kelby One. I don't know where to start learning. They are so awesome. Thank you, Sandra. And hi to Paul. Uh, he says, g'day from Australia. So now, let's get on to our topic. So we're sitting there at lunch today. We're talking. We didn't have a, we didn't have a topic for the grid. We're just talking about crap. And we're just we're going back and forth and stuff. And I don't know, somehow... Somebody made a joke. We're talking about the shape of octas. I'm like, why, why does the octa shape exist instead of a square box? And so one of the seven things I think that we would, that we would agree, I think this is one of the few things that we agreed <laughs> on, was about catch lights in the eyes, okay? The reflection mm -hmm. of the light is like, yeah, one mistake I do see is when someone doesn't have any catch lights. It looks weird. It, it looks like got a black hole. Yeah, a black hole where your pupil is instead of actually seeing a reflection. It, it looks, well, would that be your pupil? It's not your iris. It's your pupil, yeah. Uh, well, so in your iris, cornea. or your pupil. Yeah, iris. Or your cornea. cornea. I don't know, whatever. You don't really know, I, don't, do I, I have no idea. We call it the eyeball. Uh, the, the eyeball. eyeball thing. I like it. It's the eyeball thing. So the eyeball <laughs> thing, it would be if you don't see some kind of a reflection, it looks weird. Now, very often, a client would look at a photo. They would not be able to tell you what's wrong, but they know something's wrong. Like they'd go, I don't know. But they, can, they won't tell you, oh, the catch lights aren't there because clients don't even know what a catch light is. Right. Which, is which is, this is what we started talking about, is how photographers obsess over the shape of the catch light. <laughs> nobody, nobody cares about catch lights but other photographers. We have a problem. Indeed. No, so here's the thing. If there is a catch light, whether it's square, whether it's rectangular, whether it's a ring flash, Mr. Ring Flash, whether, whether it's, it, as long as there is a light shape there, everyone's good. The client's good. It looks, the people don't look dead. Everything's fine. But photographers seem to obsess on, well, the reason I use an octa is I like an octa shaped. If I'm uh, outdoors, it's, it resembles the sun. You know, whereas indoors if maybe the sun use had a square. square edges like that. It you would, know, it, it rounds out in the. So, so I, I get. <laughs> yeah. If it, if it, let me ask you a question. The things if it photographers rounds, talk about at lunch. If it rounds out, if it rounds out in the catch lights, then why aren't you just using a round softbox? Because it silence. It goes, yeah. No, here's the answer. Because it would be more difficult to set up. To be quite honest, I mean, traditionally rods. Are positioned into a speed ring. Umbrellas There's more. around. Umbrellas around. That's a very easy Somewhere. way. Yes. That's yes. what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. If you really were trying to do to make a catch light that looks like this line, and by the way, who's actually looking well, at, at the well, at technically the catch a catch light that looks like the sun would be a raw, like a beam light. of light, a hard a source light. of light. You right. know, it's just a, a little specular round highlight. Dot. That's a, yeah, a specular highlight. 
Um, but our minds tell us that that roundness is but, emulating but that But you do that, get, that you do get yeah. outdoors, you get a catch mm -hmm. light, mm -hmm. if sure, you do it right. Sure. I mean, if you don't, it's and, like, and, and this is probably one of those places where I probably, you know, am not on the whole bandwagon of catch lights, only because um, my particular style of photography, I'm, if a catch light doesn't relay the message that I'm trying to convey in my image, then I really don't care about the catch light. You know, because it's, it's one of those things, like you said, other photographers are going to be the ones that are looking at it. Yeah. And, and, and if, I, go, if, I'm, if I'm trying light? to get a catch light and that's that particular um, specularity in the eye is not helping my story, then I'm not going to worry about it. You know, it's all well, about should, shaping the light and making it dramatic. We should be more concerned about the quality of the light. Is right. it a soft quality source? Of the is it light. a hard source? And, is, the, is the drama that I'm trying to convey actually there? And is right. that drama conveying and you can, the message? But in the catch light of the eye, like, come on, let's go look at your shots. Your shots. Uh, I, you want to go back there? There's, <laughs> no, you've got great shots, but like, I can't tell what her catch lights are. Yeah. There's her there, catch lights. Yeah, we got catch lights in that one. You definitely have. Let's zoom yeah, yeah. in for those of you at home. She's got catch lights galore. There's definitely that looks a catch like light. what is that? A beauty dish or a ring light? That's a beauty dish. Beauty dish. Beauty dish. That's round. That is round. Does it look right. like the sun? That is up for no. debate. <laughs> no, it's soft. That I mean, is I, up for debate. It, it's like Eric yeah, it's said, a, a harder. A, you would. It would yeah, be like. It would be a almost hard pure white. Specularity. Almost pure yeah. white yeah. in yeah. the eye. Yeah. Hey, Larry Becker's got a good point here. He says, "I love David Kierden's class on Kelby One that teaches how to illustrate beautiful catch lights in the eye. In fact, I think David gives a set of brushes that are catch light brushes. But wow. these and these mm -hmm. add. He has mm -hmm. an octa and different ones. No I kidding. mean, seriously, really? they're they're Photoshop cool. brushes." In the shape, but that's if you don't have, if you don't have catch lights, you mm -hmm. wouldn't you wouldn't go in there so and, well, I mean, I guess you could, you could just put in fake, you know, but most of the time you're going to have hopefully a fresh. But anyway, that's number one is mm -hmm. no catch lights. That is a big mm -hmm. a, a big no no. You got to have catch lights. Um, Matt says I'm going to make uh -huh. triangle soft boxes to give crazy cats. Catch lights just to freak Scott out. <laughs> or, no, Matt, you want to use a ring light? <laughs> make a soft box that looks like a cat. And then you see two cat highlights in the eye. That would freak me out. <laughs> all right. So. Uh, <laughs> uh, Give away all our product secrets. I'm not even, today, yeah, right, yeah. I'm sorry. That, that coming <laughs> out? Like, well, we got to cancel that now. Is the cat. Hey, Mark wants to know, what's, what is the uh, shaft diameter of the Apollo? Would an Ellen Chrome Quadra light fit, which is seven millimeters? Mark, we don't use millimeters in this country, so we have no idea. None of us could ever, we will never, ever be able to tell you Mark, what seven millimeters, how big it is, small it is. We don't know. Mark, call Westcott Customer Service uh, or email info, info at fjwestcott.com. Hey Mark, I think the website has the info. Yeah, it probably no, does. Mark, too. here's the thing. I'm going to be straight with you. When you call Westcott Customer Service, you think they're going to answer in Europe? No, they're in the United States. You know what they're going to say? Seven millimeters? I have no idea because they're American. We don't even understand what MM means. To us, it's a snack that that's comes so, in a brown package so or a yellow package. <laughs> that's, that's MM. I hope you oh, know, Oh, that's Mark. so bad. <laughs> yeah, that's... No, I'm just telling Mark that, I don't know who Mark it is, but I'm just saying it's the truth. We don't know what seven millimeters is. The whole rest of the world does. <laughs> Ask Paul in Australia up at 6 a.m. I'll guarantee you he knows how big seven millimeters is. Us, About that. You, can, there, there you it go. It is, <laughs> because I'm, I know no. what an umbrella is, a, a chef diameter. It's roughly that. He doesn't I'm, know. I'm not even going to get into this. He, he doesn't. I think you're doing the right thing. All right, so that's yes. number one. Mistake number one, you got to have catch lights. And, and as far as, you know, I'll never forget, I was at, I think it was at like uh, Photo Plus East in New York. I was uh, watching Joe McNally on stage teaching, and somebody from the audience asked Joe, Joe put up a picture and it had a catch light in it, and they were saying, well, what about that? They, were, they mentioned the catch lights, and mm -hmm. Joe was like, are you kidding me? He, and that's what he said, and that's what was the first time I realized it. Nobody cares about catch lights but other photographers. Mm -hmm. right. You're not mm -hmm. going to. If you went up to a, a client and said, what kind of catch light do you like in the eyes? The first question they would ask you back is, what's a catch light? A catch light, the reflection, the white reflection. There's a white reflection in people's eyes. You were doing all of the catch light stuff for you. You are doing, don't look at that screen because then not, you can see what I'm I doing. Know. Look over I'm here at me. So, <laughs> anyway. So, hey, uh, 
Alan, Alan Potts says, I want more classes from Dave Black, Rick, and Scott. Sports, please. Um, hey, um, yeah, we're already, we're already talking with Dave Black. Dave Black is definitely coming in for some classes. We just had a brand new sports class from uh, Rob F -F -F Foley. And so if you haven't caught Rob's class, go people love it. Go check it out. All right, let's move on because that was number one, no catch lights. Number two, and this is one of the most, I, I, I think it's one of the most prevalent things that I see is the lighting is too bright. Like people are over lighting. Like it, it, it almost looks like, it almost looks like people are starting at 100, yes. like full mm, power or right three quarter power. And it looks like a car headlight. It, it, I would say that that has to be one of the single biggest mistakes that I see people make with lighting is they're literally over lighting stuff. Now, there are times when you're trying to do high key or you're trying mm -hmm. to do beauty where you want a lot of light. I'm not talking about a lot of light. I'm talking about just oh, simply over lighting it. You take someone out on location and it's so bright that it, you might as well just put on the bottom shot with flash because it, it looks so, it's it, the word, now this is gonna sound like it's not a word flashy. Right? You've seen shots that look flashy. You mm -hmm. look at it and you go, mm -hmm. it just, it looks just so Too much. Just flashy, right? Yeah. Hey, Alan, Alan asks, how big is my 400 millimeter lens? <laughs> this big, that big. Or, or it could be this big. Depends upon the optics. Depends upon the optics. So you see, Alan, we really don't know. <gasps> we really <laughs> just don't know. All right. So uh, your thoughts? You see that a lot. People light, over lighting like well, mad. I, uh, from a from a manufacturer standpoint, I s hear people say, "How many watt seconds is that? What's the po how, what's the lumens? What's the lux?" So, so you I'm already like, know what the problem and is. And I already uh -oh. know. <laughs> that, well, they're going to turn this on full blast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they want to use it on full blast. And, and you're right. I think half the time, you know, I can't tell you. Like our flex lights, for example, um, people are Peter Hurley's kit. People are using those at twenty percent. You know, yeah, they don't, you know, you don't need it that bright. They, they don't use these at full power, but but I think you're right. If it looks, it, it's the same thing with the dead eyes. Something looks off. It's overcooked. It, there's too much, too much fire on the on the, on the oven right there. And we yeah. and we see that a lot here when we do uh, blind critiques, which are next week, by the way. Next week's the blind critique show. Mm -hmm. uh, we see that a lot in the blind critiques where people send in the shots and they're just. Their, their flash is, is at 100, like you just said, Peter Hurley's lights, right? You guys sell Peter Hurley's yes, kit. Yes, yes, yes. And, and it should be, and you have people shooting it at 20%, but people are also cranking it to 100. Right, yep. I, think, I think that comes to what I said at lunch, you know, don't let the lights control you, you control the lights. Yeah. And you know, you have to do that two ways, either through your light source or through your camera settings, you know, your f-stop and your shutter speed. I mean, and that's, that's the main thing, control Control your environment, control your lights. That's what it's all about. That's what we do. Yeah. All right, let's, this is a girl on screen is freaking me out here. I have the woman with the eyes <laughs> still like really big on my screen. It's freaking me out. All right, so that was number two, not softening the light. All right, so my third one is about flash, all right? And this is gonna make people angry, but I'm gonna say it anyway, because it's one of the biggest problems I see that people do. When I run into people and they're having trouble with flash, 99% of the time, they're using TTL. Now that can be ITTL, <laughs> ETTL, something with TTL. And, and I think one of the problems they have is TTL is, is not consistent. Mm -hmm. You can shoot the same person, move slightly to the left or slightly to the right, and get four different exposures. You take four shots and the flash will change power. It's just, it drives people crazy because they'll take, we'll take a bracket of 10 shots and in there they go, oh, I like the lighting the way it looked on number four, and I like the lighting the way it looked on number seven and eight. Yep. But they want the lighting to look the same every time. And I tell you what, I mean, I remember Joe McNally saying, he says, TTL can save your life, but it can also throw you under the bus. And I, I quote Joe that's because great. he is the magical. That is great. Yeah. That's the, he's the magical Perfect. unicorn of flash. But that's the way it is. And sometimes it actually is, it actually is nice. I mean, it, it, it can save your butt. But if you shoot in manual mode, you are controlling the power of the flash. And the power of the flash does not change without you. Mm -hmm. And so if you take a shot, it's the same consistent amount of light every, every time. single time. If you think the flash is too bright, you just turn it down a notch. And it's, it's so easy when people get off TTL and get on the manual, it's so easy. And you know, back in the day, Joe McNally and uh, David Hobby went out of a thing. Remember the flash bus? Mm -hmm. They went on a flash bus mm -hmm. tour. Mm -hmm. Joe uses TTL, 
and David used manual. They used two different things. But the thing about it is people will go, well, Joe uses TTL. And you know what I tell people? You're not Joe. Joe can use whatever he wants. Joe is the magical unicorn. He can put anything he wants. He could take duct tape and take a flash and put it to a squirrel and it would look awesome. So just because you saw <laughs> Joe do it doesn't mean the rest of us can do it. It's like he's special and magical and the rest of us are rest or regular people trying to make a flash look good. And it's just, there you go. It's just, <laughs> but, but I would say if you're struggling with TTA, if you're struggling with your flash and you're not happy with the results, one of the reasons is probably you're using TTL. Now, flash manufacturers, love TTL. They, they're like, oh, and it has TTL, TTL. I see even big flash companies, strobe companies coming out and saying, hey, we have, this is the one that has TTL. And I'm like. It's good marketing. It's good marketing. It's great marketing. It's great marketing because it sounds like a thing. But well, the best thing I could tell you is don't use it. It gets you right. in the ballpark, but you're right. I think the inconsistency is the biggest detriment to TTL. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if there was a way to dial in TTL and tweak it and it could be a little bit more consistent that'd be one thing but well you, know. you, you can you can fix it's it for one shot yeah, yeah. let's go manual yeah. you can dial <laughs> yeah, it in. Yeah, 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 you I'm can fix good. it for one shot but it'll change <laughs> on the next uh, one on the next one manual yeah. that's the way to go manual is I mean, the way I, to go i mean i i literally all my equipment i would set to manual my cameras i set to manual i i don't use autofocus i just i feel you don't I, use I, autofocus i am more accurate than autofocus He's a machine, ladies and gentlemen. I am a machine. machine. I am a He's robot. A love machine, if I remember <laughs> well, right. Yes. A love machine. Time out, time out. My wife might be watching. All right. Spe <laughs> hey, Spectacle Photo asks, how do we submit our work for reviews on the grid? So there's a website that, that I bet our control room and Meredith's in the room <clears throat> controlling us. She's the director. Mm -hmm. I bet within the next 45 minutes to an hour, actually within the next 28 minutes, she will find the link where we submit the grids uh, you submit your images to, and we pick a bunch of people and look at them next week. Um, Carl Downing says, if you need to run your lights 100%, you need bigger lights. <laughs> so then you can turn them way, like way, turn them way down. down. All right. Like Ricardo that, says, TTL should be used if you have 30 seconds to shoot someone and have no time to set up and such. Yes. Otherwise, it's just for lazy peeps. High Ricardo, five, Ricardo, we should be friends. <laughs> yeah. All right, Dave, Dave Cross just Dave. tuned in and goes, That's, oh, there's a terrible oh, trio. No. Come on, Dave. Oh, Dave, come on. Oh, kill Dave, me. Dave, Dave. Kill me. Dave. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, Mr. Cross? Dave, bring some brownies near the studio. <laughs> Those ones that your wife makes. Yes, are... bring brownies. That's exactly what we need. You know, we're short. Brownies. Brownies. Hey, Dave, was just, Dave was just here last week taping a class. Dave's awesome. He's uh, he's, oh, he's, Dave. he's the Canadian boss. Oh, Dave Cross, the Canadian boss. <laughs> yeah, he is. All right, here's where you go to submit the grid. <laughs> All right, so we found the grid submission form. It's The address is who knows, but that's the place. It is, oh, God. I don't know how to get there. We'll find that. You know what? On the next break. No, that's way too long. That's like, no, no, there's you know a short address. You know those binoculars you mentioned on B&H? Yeah, no, no. We yeah, we will. I'm going to find it for you on the break, and we'll, we'll give you the thing. Um, uh, Nicolay asks, what, uh, what will the uh, next week's critiques, is there a theme for next week's critiques? Let me, do, who's our guest next week? Is it you? <laughs> who's our guest next week? No, we have who we have coming in next week? I'll tell you. I'll tell you what our, our theme will be. It is Insects is the theme next. No, we don't, we don't have anyone next week. We don't have anyone next week. I bet it's Jen and Calibra next week. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, well, you know what I would do? Oh, there's the actual. There oh, we go. There go. Here's the. Here, okay. Kelby1.com/slash/thegrid-critique. Boy, she's on the ball back there today. Yeah, she is. <laughs> That's funny. Kelby1.com slash the grid dash grid. You can send them in now. I'll, I'll get to see them all and we'll, we'll pick some for next week. And it'll be, uh, looks like it'll be me and Jed and Calibra. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Let's do people. Let's do portraits. Yeah, let's do portraits. With an emphasis on lighting. With an entry? No, not an <laughs> emphasis on lighting. No, any kind of, you can do natural light if you want. No, no. You well, can. that's the type of light. That's, you know, and that's what, something that we talk about a lot is, you know, what's the best type of light? Honestly, natural. If you, can, if you, if you have can, it, if you get natural but, light. But but here's the problem with natural light: you can't control it. 
you can't and you can't it can't count be on it. one o'clock in the afternoon yeah there's a storm coming through this area right no so. way here in florida we never get storms well it's like a it's a big deal i i i've seen all these cancellations fedex is notifying me things are getting delayed just another day in Florida. Well, you know what it is? I always I make this joke, and it is it is kind of a joke. So don't take so don't take this the wrong way. But I say if you're if you're a natural light photographer and you don't know how to use at least one, use one flash, what you're basically saying is I'm a part time photographer. Yes. Can't shoot at night. I can't shoot indoors unless there's a window and a lot of good light. And I can't shoot if there's a thunderstorm. And I and you can give all the reasons on the times that you can't shoot. Right. Where if you learn just learn how to use one flash, you can shoot all the time. Now that brings me up to one of my, my my comments. So one of my other things that I tell people, and this will be one of the seven mistakes, is know when to not use flash. It's true because yeah, what will happen yeah. is, and I'm, I was with a guy where we went on location and we went into a scene that was beautifully lit and the first thing he did was start taking out his flashes. And he took a shot and it looked like he used a bunch of flashes. And I'm like, I know this isn't my gig, but why don't you try it with the flashes turned off? And it was perfect. I think what happens to us is when we get good at lighting, it's so much fun and it's so easy that you, you want to always use it. Right. And there is a time where you go, you know what, there's great natural light. I'll tell you a sad story. It's not really a sad story, but it was a bad story. So we rent this mansion two and a half hours from here. Amazing place in Howie in the Hills, Florida. We, we, we rent this millionaire's empty mansion, completely empty with mm -hmm. like three pieces of furniture. Unbelievable place. So cool. In fact, if you want to see a picture of it, uh, if you were to go to my blog, I can show you just one room from it. If you go to my blog, you know, I'll be able to show you here in a second if my blog ever loads. Uh, our internet connection is less than awesome. So the first picture on my is taken in there. So this place, it's mm, just a wow. be nice. beautiful setting, right? So we get there. We literally, I'm not making this up, we rented a U-Haul to take the lighting equipment. Behind, see that, see that curtain? See the red curtain? Behind that curtain is a room, and it goes from one end to the other and is completely filled with equipment. Completely filled. We never used a single light the entire day. The only thing we did was, see the window she's in front of? Yep. We put a shower curtain liner in front of that window. Mm -hmm. Not a mm -hmm. shower curtain, but that translucent $1.99 from Walmart to Fair soften good. the light. Yeah. Because it was clipping her face. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right, it was clipping her face, and if I, back, I backed off the highlights, I didn't like what it did to the highlights. So, perfect, get some gaffer's tape, put it over the window, and it was perfect. We did the entire day and never pulled out a light, and we took a truck of lighting. We literally rented a U-Haul. That's awesome. I kid you not. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Brad and Rob Foldy were the assistants on the set, and, and Kathy Perepsky was there. We had every, we had like 11 people there. Put it all in that room, got it all set up, never, ever, ever pulled it out. Know when not to use sure. light. That's Absolutely. number four. I mean, it's beautiful light. Uh, it's, I had a similar situation. Um, we were shooting in real tight quarters. I was shooting along with a video crew, and we didn't have time. And so I just looked at the ambient light that was in there. I said, turn off all the lights in this room and let me see what I can get with just the backlight. And it was so dramatic. Oh, it can be just wonderful. Just by exposure, just by adjusting the exposure. And you're a lighting guy. Yeah, oh yeah, but I could, you know, it, there's the pre-visualization that you need to, to, to think about too and what that light's gonna do when you adjust the exposure. And the video guys were like, what the hell just happened when they saw the image? I said, just adjust your camera, just adjust the exposure. Take it off automatic. <laughs> Take it off auto. Here's yeah. another shot if you look on my screen. This is another one taking the same exact place. And, uh, and by the way, if you th we were so lucky that this mm. gust of wind came through the house and picked up her dress like that. Yeah. And if you're thinking, Timing is everything, if you're guys. Thinking, <laughs> if you're thinking we had a, an assistant throw her dress up and then run and hide behind one of those columns, boy, are you way off. No way there's Photoshop. <laughs> no way. No, they ran. There's no Photoshop. They oh, ran out. <laughs> no, they threw it up and ran out of the scene. Seventy-three, and 73 no, layers I right kid there. You not, that was running. That was <laughs> floof and run. It's called floof, floof and run. run. All righty. Hey, we're getting lots of uh, great comments here. Uh, Barb Cochran. Hi, Barb. Everybody is here today. Uh, Barb says, uh, 
I'm afraid to try this again. Calibra's class was amazing. Hey, can I tell you something? Calibra did an iPhone photography class. I saw it. Did you see it? Yeah, I saw some of the like the hold to uh, to you know hold exposure and then oh yeah, you can go up and thing. down. Yeah. Who knew? It's it's funny because there's so many little things in there. There's so many little things that. Even if you know a lot, you go, mm -hmm. I had no idea. I was, I was working with her, she's telling me what's gonna go, and I'm, I'm basically acting as just secretary, I'm writing down what she's gonna teach. And she would write stuff and I go, how do you do that? I've been using an iPhone since day one. Right. I'm like, what, you, you, are you kidding me? I mean, I learned so many things. The, the comments on her class have been off the chain. I saw somebody yeah. else said, um, look at this. Uh, Ch Chuck Van Sistine says, biggest thing I learned from Calibra's iPhone class was the focus and that's, exposure lock and adjustment. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, what I was talking about. Awesome yeah, yeah. tip. And uh, all right, so Bob from Oz is talking about this. Hi, Bob. Bob says, wouldn't you start at a minimum light and then turn it up rather than going supernova and then work backwards? But I think most people, it's kind of like what you said earlier. They I think most on, people, full go. they mm -hmm. go full and then back it off instead of going up the, the, yeah. the early, earlier one. So that's great. Uh, Dave Clayton says, I only use pop-up flash. I always have awesome catch lights. My stuff looks always natural. And Joe McNally wishes he would me. He was me. Dave Clayton. Is and famous the quote on the grid. Is, <laughs> Dave Clayton that reason. said, and he adds at the end, said no one ever. So I only use pop-up flash, always awesome catch lights, always natural. And Joe McNally wishes he was me, said no one ever. But I wanted to hit on the Dave Clayton part. All right. Okay. Tammy says help. And she's got... Nine eight. exclamation point, eight exclamation points. My portraits are fine, but shooting indoor lighting is killing me. Low light weddings, they're okay, but they're not great. I need help. I've listened to your tutorial, tutorials, hey, help. So Tammy, I'm, we're gonna have to ask you some follow-up questions. So when you're saying you're shooting indoor lighting, are you bringing in the lighting or is the lighting already there? Are you having problems with the lighting that's just in the room or are you having problems with the like I brought a light and I'm having, because these are two very different things. But, it, it, but while Tammy, you're answering us back, this leads to another one of our things. And this is where one of the big problems, I see this quite a bit, you guys I'm sure do, mm -hmm. where the person using a flash is not balancing it with the room light. So what happens is it looks like your phone. The flash goes really bright and it's dark behind your subject. That's what your phone does. Like when you take an iPhone and you take a shot and click, it lights your subject, and then if they're in a room like, like this, the background goes bl almost black. Black, yeah. The idea is not to make it look like flash. That's the whole idea. Um, I'm gonna show you a shot that I did with flash here in just a second. And the idea, and I set out to do this from the beginning. I, I, don't, want, I don't want it to look like flash. You, we, we never want it to look like flash. We don't want it to look like, oh, you put up a flash. You know you've done it right if it doesn't, if it looks real. If it looks mm -hmm. natural, you're like, exactly. Okay, that's what we're going for. So when the background goes black, your subject's overexposed usually, they're too bright, and it's a dead giveaway. All you have to do to get this balancing act, I say it's all you have to do because mm -hmm. it's a little sticky, mm -hmm. but it, and it's not sticky and then it's hard, it just, you have to do a lot of test shots. You have to lower your, your shutter speed. So your shutter speed controls the ambient light in the room, right? The flash is going to light your subject. But changing the shutter speed doesn't change the power of your flash. Your flash will be the same power every time. So right now, your flash is really bright and the room is black. You're probably at 1 200th of a second, 1 1 25th of a second. As you go down to an 80th of a second, a 60th of a second, a 30th of a second, it's like turning the lights on in the room. It's like it's not going to change the power of your flash. But it's like literally going to a dimmer switch and turning it up for the rest of the room. Your job is to find that, and your stuff is beautiful. Oh, yeah. you're, you're, the way you blend flash and natural light, it looks so natural. And that's what you're it, trying to find is that, that, is that balance. balance between the two. And it's gonna take you, all it's gonna take you is move a knob one stop, take a test shot. Move a knob one stop until you find, and when you find it, it's like, ah! <laughs> when all of a sudden your flash looks real. Yeah. That's the moment and you're the, looking and for. And the key again is manual, manual, manual. Yeah, got to be a manual. Everything mode. has to be on manual. In the flash, camera, you have to be. The flash, or you could everything. do it this way. You actually take the shot before you even turn the flash unit on. See what kind Get of ambient, ambient light yep. you're getting. 
Then you kind of add the flip flash. the shape, you know, you know, the light shaper in and, and add the flash. So trying to find that shot and I'm, it's somewhere in here. It's now there's sometimes where I, I want it to be like I shot this with flash, <laughs> but like when I'm shooting a car, I don't want to, you know, if it's in a studio, you know, I don't think, well, the yeah, light. Because you can use that, that particular effect to actually create a great dramatic shot as well. It? it depends upon your environment, but. You know, to, to I'm gonna have sort to go of... to my blog to find, oh, here it is. There you go. All right, so here I'm trying, if you take a look on screen, I'm just trying to get soft light. This is just one light. It's lighting the background and it's lighting her and I'm trying to make it soft. Now you can see, I, I wanted you to see a little of the background lit. There's a canvas backdrop behind her, but I'm trying to just make it really, really soft. To make it really, really soft, I put her at the edge of the soft box. It's a large soft box like a 50 inch, but it is really just at, she's at the very edge of it. It's called feathering. So if you were to look at it, that light's not aiming at her, it's aiming past her. It's like I'm lighting the wall to her, to her right. Is that right? Or her, her left. left? Her left, her left, right. thank you. Yep. Right, to her left, our right. So from where you're looking at, it would be our right. I'm, and, and the light is aiming at that wall and she's just catching the edge of it. Because as you get to the center of the light, the light gets brighter, it gets punchier. Now, do you guys put in, you, you have, um, ba you have, what you call yeah, it? Yeah, internal Defector baffles, plates? yeah. Yeah, defector and plates and plates. baffles yeah. that go inside to kind of spread that light. So when, mm -hmm. you, when you go to a softbox, you don't want that hot spot in the middle, so you guys put a deflector yeah. in so there. So evenly yeah. spread yeah. Even, off the Evenly fusion. distributes the light, yes. Peter says, watch Cliff Mountain, or he has a great course on balancing indoor light with flash. All right, Tammy says, <laughs> working with terrible fluorescent lighting and try to balance out the light. Really bright sanctuary lights that I have no control uh, over. That's a good segue, I was going to say, I oh, think. Tammy, turn them that's off. That's a good segue <laughs> to the next one. Turn, wait, you mean turn off like the lights? <laughs> and she, the, yeah, but she says she has no control over yeah, it. Yeah, no so control, over it. control over it. Yeah. Oh, crud. Well, Get a big black scrim. And put it over the roof of the whole place. <laughs> you, know, you know what, Tammy? Unfortunately, like where you're, you got a really tough situation. Because really, you'd be, we'd be better off for it to be real dark in there than it is to be real bright in there. Uh, with fluorescent lighting, there's one thing that you can do. Now, Tammy, uh, I'm, are you using any flash at all? So Tammy, let us know that. Just, just yes, no. Are you using flash or any kind of lighting? We're gonna go on to the next one, but we need to know that because that'll kind of help us out. Uh, let's see, all right. Marshall said, I submitted my images for next week's grid. Wish me luck. I wish you luck, Marshall. Good luck, Marshall. Uh, okay, so Johan, we always read, you know, you know, there's Johan. certain people that we always read their ah. comments. Johan yep. is one. Uh, Johan uh, says, Scott, it would be nice to see another reverse photo quick technique. So ex instead of setting, uh, sending in photos to look at, for, uh, look at some awesome portrait photographers like Joe McNally and tell, and tell what makes that a great photo. Mm. You know what, Jan? Lo Johan? Jan. Johan, mm -hmm. let's wait till Joe's here. <laughs> And uh, that would be great to do. Yeah, he, he, is, yeah. he, is, he is the king. I've never seen anybody that does better reviews than Joe. Joe, honestly, is just, he, he is amazing at reviews. Uh, if, if you're a Kelby One member, uh, well, Johan is. Johan, go watch. It's called An Evening with Joe McNally. Uh, and it's, I think it's called uh, something, behind, Joe McNally Behind the Lens, An Evening with Joe. He does live critiques on stage. Hmm. We bring people out of the audience. They knew they had submitted images. He brings them up on stage, sits them right there, and does the critiques. Joe's hmm. stories are amazing. That whole night hmm. is just kind of a magical, magical thing. All right, so um, that was one. And we're waiting for Tammy to give us, tell us whether she's using flash. But Tammy's, Tammy's in, a, in, a, in a bad place. All right, <laughs> here's another one. Ready? This is a big one. You didn't use a gel when you needed to. So if you're indoors, like if it's a studio shoot, we are used to seeing white light, right? We're used to seeing it indoors. The light that I have on my subject in the photo I showed you a moment ago is actually pretty white light. And we are totally used to seeing it in what is a studio environment. Mm -hmm. Doesn't phase us one bit. When you step outside, the sun is not white. The sunlight, even if it's really, really bright, is gonna be some shade of yellow. The later in the day, the yellower it gets. If I step outside and I'm gonna shoot with the flash, the very first thing I'm gonna do is put a very thin sheet of orange gel over the flash. You will not really see it. It's so a quarter cut, it's called a quarter cut of color temperature orange 
Uh, you'll hear it called CTO gel a lot. You can buy these in sheets from B&H Photo for literally $6.99 for, I think it's a 20 by 20 sheet, right? Yeah. Right. There's sheets yeah, this right big. Yep. Yep. You take, you literally take scissors, you cut it out just, just slightly bigger, a little bigger than the front of your flash, and you tape it on. That's all you got to do, and you leave it on all day long. I don't care if you go out at 11 in the morning, you go out at 2 in the afternoon, here's where you change it. When it's, the sun starts going down, that light that looked a little bit orange, because you know what? People look better warmer, Absolutely. right? So you're, yeah. so, you're, Absolutely. so you're taking like white light and you're putting this little gel over it. And I know people that do it in the studio too. There are people that will put a little bit of, a, a little, a little warmth, bit of yes. warmth on their studio as well. But for outside, absolutely. Put a little bit of gel over it. Now you put the gel over it and as it gets later in the day, you got to put another one over it. So you're going to take a, a, a quarter <laughs> and you're taking another quarter and you tape it over. So now you have two of them taped on the front of your flash. That gets you to a half, right? And then as the sun is like going down, you need to put a third or a fourth on to where your light looks real. Like it's got to look orange. The light that you shoot at sunset from the sun would not be bright white light. And I see it all the time. And it's like, it looks so obvious. It's a Raise dead giveaway. Raise the power of your yep. flash too. That's a big Thank thing you. that people mess yeah. up. When yep. you put on these gels, it starts cutting the power of your flash because it has to go through the gel. When you get two, three, or four of them on, you have got to start raising, keeping an eye on the power of your flash. And also when you're outside, as the sun goes down, don't let the background turn black. Lower your mm -hmm. shutter speed. If you start off at 125th, by the time sunset comes, you might be a 30th of a second. Mm -hmm. Now, I also hear people go, well, I'm worried about getting down to a 15th of a second or a 30th of a second and hand holding. The flash will usually freeze your subject. Mm -hmm. At that speed, you can pretty be sure that the flash is gonna freeze enough because the, the duration of the flash is very, very, very short. Yeah. Like it, it's like, boom, it's like, it's like the speed of light. The background may be <laughs> a teensy Technically, and literally. Soft. Background might but be that's it. But, but that's but it. Again, fifteenth of a second, you're pretty safe. I mean, yeah, as long as you're not like throwing your, your elbows camera around. helps too. Yeah, tucking your tucking elbows. Your elbows. In. I mean, you have a good, tripod. You always you know? have to have good camera yeah. technique. Yes, that never. Absolutely. I don't care if it's the middle of the day, right? Uh, okay. Johan asks, feathering the light only works on a fifty-three inch octa or bigger, right? No, Johan. Mm -hmm. Any size of a softbox, the light will always be softer on the edge, right? Doesn't matter, doesn't it? Now it's nicer on a 53 because you have more room to work with. Right. But feathering basically is this. I'm trying to shoot this cup. Normally, we would aim the light right at the cup, right? Let me just turn all that off. Ooh, I just, I just, well, no, I just saw, I just saw, uh, I'm gonna get a haircut. Well, so Alicia, <laughs> 9.30 Tuesday, join me for a haircut. All right, here we go. Well, I told her, I sent her a note, seriously. I sent, I sent my hairdresser a note today. Tell me if this is exaggerating, Jen, you be honest. I wrote, hi, Alicia, my hair is so long now that I look like I'm in a big hair band from the 80s. Help, I need a cut badly. This may require hedge trimmers and a leaf blower. Is that? It's so long. I feel like I'm in warrant. All right, so here's the thing. Let's just, it's a small soft box. This is aiming right at the, at the cup. And this soft box is going to be, the middle of it is going to be the brightest part. If I were to turn the soft box this way, so my subject's here, and the light's going right past, the softest light is still going to fall on there. So even though if it's a smaller, even if it's a 24 inch by 24 inch, if it's a smaller soft box, it's still going to make a difference. But you know, you know what will make a difference, a bigger difference? Taking a break. You know why? Because on screen it says break, dash, 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 dash. So. We're going to take a break. It's important. And then we're going to answer Andrew's question. And then we're going to answer Tammy's question because Tammy says she has a flash. We're going to talk to Spectacle. We're going to talk to John, Clinton, and many more. Don't go away. You're live here on The Grid. My name is Kaylee Greer, and I'm a professional dog photographer. Kelby One has been monumental in this journey of mine. I have the opportunity to pull from years and combine professional experience. It's like the support system at the touch of a button. KelbyOne.com.
when you need a tripod that is compact, that is portable enough to take with you anywhere, one that is adaptable to any situation, that will prove versatile enough for any shoot, and is compatible with your other gear, giving you freedom to create your own perspective. Look no further. Platypod Ultra does it all. Platypod Ultra, now on Kickstarter. Hey, we are back. Uh, Scott Kelby here with Brandon and Eric, and we are talking about lighting. Hey, uh, so, uh, hey, I do want to mention this. Okay, this is just a side, right? Because they're from, they're from Westcott. Like, yes, duh, he's wearing a Westcott shirt, like, pimping out here. Somewhere else. Um, if you're a Kelby One member, they have a discount. You get 10% off your Westcott stuff. So if you're a Kelby One member, go to your member dashboard. Go to, to I think, perks. Under discounts, there is a secret code. Dun, dun, dun. Secret code. There's a secret code there where you can get 10% off your Westcott stuff direct from Westcott. And if you're not a Kelby One member, well, do the free trial. Yeah, do the free trial. <laughs> there you go. Do the free trial. Then you're go to the dashboard. Go to the dashboard. It'll help offset the cost of your membership. All right. Andrew uh, asks, uh, so I submitted my pictures a few weeks back. Will they still be considered for next week? No, Andrew, they will not. We threw your images in the trash. So send them again, Andrew, and we'll, re we'll reconsider them. Uh, Tammy says yes, she is using a flash. So Tammy, the only thing that we might tell you is what, gel it? Gel it. Gel, gel it. your flash. Well, and that would be a green gel, because most fluorescents have a green cast to them. Right, you want to match the light from your flash to the, right. to the ambient, awful right. ambient light in the room. Yes, absolutely. And that's, you know, it's one of the things that uh, you look at, and I call it atmospheric matching, essentially, and that's what I use for all my composites as well. I make sure that the light is exactly the same temperature. And so that's essentially what you're doing. Put the green gel on your strobe. It'll match your, uh, your fluorescent lights up above and you should be all set. Just make sure that you set your camera then to a fluorescent setting because it has the color correct in camera. Right. So, you're go so here's what you're gonna do, Tammy, and you're in a bad situation, so this isn't gonna make it beautiful. <laughs> but <laughs> this, it, there's nothing worse than having to go into Photoshop and fix color problems, where you yes. have part of the scene oh. is one color and part of the scene's another. It's a mess, Tammy. So here's what you're gonna do. Set your, your white, balance white balance to fluorescent. That gets your camera yes. right. Now you, gotta, now you have a flash. The flash is gonna be white in a green room. Which means all your hair from all your subjects are gonna be green. <laughs> If you use that white flash. Right, so don't use that white flash. You're gonna, you, and chances are, Tammy, yours came with a green correction gel. Your, yours probably came like a Nikon or Canon, probably two or three gels that are designed like one's for, for tungsten and yep. one is for outdoor and one is for uh, fluorescent. If you don't have them, go to, go to, go to, get Rogue's kit. Rogue has a nice kit. They have one, I think that's called like creative gels, like for like yep. reds and greens and blues mm -hmm. and solids. Every for color in the background. rainbow. And then they have another set that's like for masses. Go to Rogue, uh, they, Rogue Flash Benders is, is what the, like, the series is called, but mm -hmm. go to Rogue and get their gels. They're already pre-cut, they come with a little band, you wrap around there, it's really mm -hmm. nice stuff. So hope, I hope that helps, because I know that that's a bad situation. Um, so Ben says, Scott, what about, this is going back to our earlier thing, what about Peter Hurley's catch lights? There are four oblong lights in his shots. Is that normal? <laughs> it's absolutely not. And you know who notices it, Ben? You. <laughs> Nobody it's, else. It's normal for Peter. That is his normal look. It's his signature That's look. Peter's look, but no one's going, I, I just don't like these shots of Peter. Yeah. Fortune 500 companies fly mm -hmm. Peter in. He was shooting with the Oakland Raiders yesterday. With the Raiders yep. yesterday. I saw that on, on Instagram. Mm -hmm. yep. So, yeah, he's shooting all these big, big name people, and no one's going, I'd like to hire him, but those oblong catch lights, <laughs> I just can't do it. I'm just not going to hire him. Um, all right, so Barb's, Barb says two things. Barb says, Kaliber's class was amazing. Loved it and learned so much. Thank you, Barb. Barb says, I take Kelby One to bed with me every night. Uh, every night I go into my bedroom so I can focus with no distractions and I watch all your amazing classes. Thank That's you awesome. so much. Thank you, Barb. You are awesome. Awesome. Uh, Clinton Farrar says, Dave Cross is my favorite instructor. Uh, Clinton is now barred from the grid. <laughs> so just put ban him. Can he does the ban block? What do we do? <laughs> okay, good. So Jen says she's got you covered. Um, all right, 
Uh, Terry White says the best Westcott mi modifiers are the Rapid Box 26 Octa. It's my favorite. Mm -hmm. You like that one? Are you kidding? <laughs> it's our most popular. Dude, the Rapid Box Octa is just. It's our most popular, hands down. Absolutely. Yeah, dude, it's, it's the best. I just want a, I want a bigger one, too. What's the other one you make, a 30? 30? 32. 32. It also takes two speed lights. It's called the Duos. It takes two speed lights. can duo. also use one. And the, he likes the eye lighter, too. Is the eye lighter the round there, thing that goes the under curved, the, the curved reflector? Moon looking. Any yeah. studio photographer should, should have an eye lighter. Hey, Ricardo says, what's up, guys? I finally had a day off to drop by. Well, Ricardo, thanks for dropping by when we have nine seconds left. So we're going to real quickly... Let's talk about, let's talk real quickly about where you go to win the stuff because we're giving away, courtesy of our friends at Westcott Lighting uh, or FJ Westcott if you want to be fancy. <laughs> and the FJ sounds, it stands for Fairy Jancy, which is like, <laughs> almost like very fancy. Um, go to kelby1.com slash contest and, and put your name and all that stuff in, say that you're watching the grid. And then where it says comments, you gotta tell us what you wanna win. You can win Lens Pro to Go gift cards, $50 each, but you have to be in the US to use these. You cannot use the used in Slovakia, so don't even enter. The famous Platypod, Max. There it is, coolest support ever, right? We are going to give away the Apollo Orb, Right? Yep. So yeah, Orb, that's one. And Moose's book. Moose's book on aviation photography. The prizes are legit today. No Dude, the kidding. prizes are legit. It's like. Can we enter that? It's $5,000 worth of prizes <laughs> if you price Moose's book at 4950 Anyway, um, all right. We, we're basically out of time. So I do want to do this. I, I'd like to kind of just go over the seven things that we talked about. I, I don't want to go into depth, but just mm -hmm, mention mm -hmm. what they are. So if we can just, uh, Meredith, can you just Meredith, can you? There you go. There you go. Other yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Here they are, because oh, we wrote God. them down. All right. Oh, no. It's, there they are. Okay. Number one, not having catch lights in the eyes. And while we're there, stop worrying about the shape of the catch lights. <laughs> Number two, your flash is too bright. You over lit the flash, yep. right? Turn Number, it down. Number three, TTL. Turn it on manual. Turn it on manual. Thank you. Do your manual thing. Put your flash on manual. Yes. Don't don't fall for the marketing hype. Then you can call yourself a pro. That's right. If you turn it to manual, it's call yourself a pro. Put, Either put that or put it on. Isn't that what P is uh, P is for stands for on yeah. pro? Yeah. 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 All right. Number four, you didn't use a gel when you needed to. You were you were in a situation outdoors where you needed to put a gel on, you didn't. You shot white light into everything and it just looks awful. They're inexpensive, no reason not to use them. $6.99 will keep you that, for a year of gels. That will last you a uh, lifetime. Maybe last you're you're using, if you're using speed lights, well, people, yeah, yeah, people it's, lose it's them, gonna, they lose them. Yeah. All right. Okay, so let's scroll up. Marrow, there we go. And there we go. There it is. You used flash when you didn't need to. You didn't blend the light with the, you didn't blend your flash with the existing light. And there's one last one we didn't mention. That's didn't right. Mention it. Yeah, the cast in shadows. So a, a lot of times when you want to take a picture of a group, what happens? They go, they go and stand against the wall. Yeah, everybody goes I mean, they against always the wall. stand against the wall. You want, and you'll get harsh, horrible shadows from that. You always want to bring them away from the wall. A good five, eight feet if yeah, you can. Yeah, I like, you I like know? eight I mean, feet. Eight, eight feet, feet is, is a good good distance and that way you get rid of those horrible shadows on the wall and it looks so much better because the shadows the will then they off. won't they will fall onto the ground instead right. of falling onto the exactly. background so put some space you want space between the background and your subject don't put them too close to the wall and if you're doing multiple subjects make sure you stagger them a little bit so that the shadow doesn't fall onto your your other yeah subject. by staggering yeah. them also you know we could do a whole shot a whole thing on group shots oh my god yes. just on group we shots could, alone would be sure. fun all right. Well, guys, thank you very much. I just want to mention a couple of things. If you are a Kelby One member and you're in the, in the community, we have something cool we want you to do. We, we are ready to beta test our new Kelby One app. This is the app that lets people take classes offline. So if they're on a plane and they don't want to have to stream or they're very someplace nice. where there's slow internet or bad internet or whatever, you can take classes offline like onto your iPad or onto your phone and watch them without awesome, any man. internet connection at all. So, but it's much more than that. We've rebuilt the app from the ground up. We've tested it internally and it's going pretty good. 
So now we're going to go to those folks that are in the community forum. We're going to be posting there. So keep an eye for a post and a link to go beta test. The people that are in our community forums are so involved. They are like super, super, people like Nando, Nando, um, <laughs> super involved and they're great people and they're smart and they help each other out and they're going to get That's the first, they're going to get the community. first shot at it out. Uh, Eric, where can people go learn more about you? About me? Yeah, about uh, you, you know, well, you're a photographer. <laughs> uh, EricEgleyPhotography.com or now that I'm with Westcott, FJWestcott.com and about our team. About our team, all right. And where can people learn about you, Brandon? FJWestcott.com. FJ FJ Westcott oh, West University, FJ Westcott, about yep. us. Yeah. Yep. Now what's Somewhere interesting is, you know, last week we, we had Larry on from Platypod. He's a sponsor of the show. You guys are not sponsors of the show. But you're we, still on. We, we were we just are. talking about we that, are. actually. Yes. <laughs> we are. We'll talk to Cleaver. Because you're a nice guy. That's what it is. I, I just wanted him on here so we could talk about lighting. <laughs> <laughs> I could talk about light. We had so much fun at lunch today. We had a really, really oh, yeah. fun time. You know what it is? And that's one of the things that I hope you guys like about the grid and that, that I, I love to do is just sit around and talk with other photographers. Oh, yeah. It that's is just awesome. so much fun because there's we all have so many things in common, but there's also things like I, every time just talking to you guys, I've learned things. Mm -hmm. Just hanging out and just talking. It's always fun to just learn something. And, you know, you get to a point where if, if I have a lunch with somebody and I learn one great thing, I'm just so happy. I'm just like, wow, I learned, learned something new. Uh, John, John, we're going we're, we're gonna to leave with this. John, John says, I'm turning in late, turning in late 10 minutes ago. And he's giving you a plug here, so I'm going to say it. <laughs> Westcott has the best customer service, and I could not be happier with my various Westcott gear. Oh, and I love watching The Grid. It's my favorite show on the internet or TV or YouTube. I'm looking forward to next week on next week's show on portraits. John, thank you very much. That's thank very you, kind John. Of thank you. you, John. And uh, they thank you as well. Loopy Bridget says the community is awesome. Yes, it is. And Matt, the Wombat Charniski says Adam and Eric have done an awesome job with the dev work on that uh, new app. Good job, Barb Adam. says bring on the app. And so Eric. happy. <laughs> Barb Cochran, love you, Bob Cochran. Barb says, thank you for the fun. Say hi to Jack, Barb. Tell him we love him, too. And we'll see you guys next week on The Grid. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you. See you guys Scott. later. Cheers.